my first time in Brazil, yes. Okay. Very, very good coffees. And what, what surprised me also was that none of the coffees were darker roasted. They were on the lighter side. Mm -hmm. So you had like both citric and very good flavors in there, fruity flavors, which usually isn't the case in barista competitions very often. It is very often a little darker, heavier coffees, but these ones were fruity and very interesting. Well, what was proven in Seoul just two months ago was that the, the Bristol champion, he won with a normal Bourbon from El Salvador, but he brewed it very well on stage, while as very many of the people, the baristas who came to the World Championship, they brought tender geishas, which were difficult to brew, and they were unlucky with them, so they fell down in scores, many of them. You can win with a beautiful geisha if you're a good barista, it's roasted well, and you know the machine well. So you need to have a very good barista to execute a good geisha. I think I would practice on sensory skills. Sensory skills? Yeah, I practice on sensory skills like cupping and tasting some coffee and uh, practice on flavor descriptors, no, knowing coffee and be able to describe it. Okay. But I mean, technically, some of these guys were quite good. Quite good. Clean, clean the machine after you're done with your performance. Clean the machine <laughs> and wipe surfaces. When you, when you work in a service environment, like a cafe, you need to be very tuned in to if, if there are spills, if, there are, is there, if there's dirt anywhere, if the grinder is dirty, the machine is dirty, the drip tray is dirty. You need to be very careful to make sure this is very clean. The end of a routine should be like the end of a shift in a coffee shop. Everything should be perfectly clean. And that was the, it was, I think, one of the points that could be improved for all yeah. competitors. Great. Except was one. two. Except, Except one. one. Yeah. One was, one was very no. good. No, was very no. Good. number three. Number three. Number three no. had the highest no. technical scores. So, I, still, yeah. I still work in a coffee shop every day uh, and you know in my I'm life. And I'm wiping tables, I'm cleaning things, and I'm cleaning my machine at the end of the routine. Yeah. Good man. Good man. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very good point here because in, in competition, some guys the last two days went overtime because of, I don't know, hesitations and waiting for things and, and not a structured performance at all. And uh, you have others who finish two minutes before. They should. They could use the last two minutes to shine and shine and shine and get a very good end result. But they didn't. So they need to, for the Bristol competition, this is not just Brazil, this is in many countries. They need to read the rules much more. The rules is a wonderful package of, of, of what dictates what, uh, what the competition is about. It tells exactly what the judges have to look for. The judges can't just have an opinion. They need to be trained and calibrated and follow the, uh, the routines of the rules. Everything is written there. And I tried to hint yesterday to the six finalists also. Go home and read the rules a little bit more. See if you get some inspiration there. I have a feeling that they haven't even looked at the score sheets. Instead of talking about the farmer and the farmer's dog and the climate, you just look at the score sheet. Okay, this is what I'm scored at. This shows my skills. I can show my skills through this score sheet. The most yeah, recent I'm... world winner was from the United Kingdom. The United yes. Kingdom does not have a reputation of no. having good customer service. He's an exceptional. No, he's fantastic. He also, both on stage and also privately, he, he really has a, a talent for customer service. Really. Dale Harris of the UK, by the way. Yeah, Dale Harris. There, there are some, there's, there's an age, there's a, a nice spectrum, I think, of ages, but some of the new baristas, I think they would do well to focus on shop skills, general shop skills, cleanliness, um, making sure you're cleaning your horse before you put it in the espresso machine. Uh, some very, very simple things. And if you're very new to coffee, you get extremely excited about the flavors of coffee. You're excited about the processing method, you're excited about the farms, and sometimes you ignore the very simple shop skills. If, and baristas that have worked in a cafe for 10 or 15 years, they, they know this. They've done it every day for 10 or 15 years, so it, it would be wise for you baristas to focus on the daily skills of being a good barista. Because this is still a barista competition. And you see many of the, or several of the winners the last years, they're not working as baristas anymore. They are roasters or they own a big company and they are sponsored by some huge when they go to the world. So I, I really welcome that we see younger coming out of the competition who are actually working on the floor. They can bring it back to uh, back to the competition limit what the rule says. Look for the role model for the barista profession. Because we need people to be good at service skills. Why do they do? Looking out for the guests. Sensorically talking about coffee and maybe try to show a little bit of the difference in that coffee pyramid 
of commodity coffee and specialty coffee at the top, which is like a tiny pixel on the screen. Specialty coffee is what the population is about as well. The very, very good, tender, delicate coffees, they need to be handled well by the serve well customers. Since 1999, complexities has changed enormously what we know about coffee, not just in Brazil, but all over the world. The more countries have been like joining Capexlens, showing that there are good producers out there. They might be small producers, but some of the small producers out there in, in very good regions, they can produce something which is diamonds, gold. And especially for small roasters, small roasters, artisan roasters all over the world, they would love and pay a lot to get just three, four bags of a geisha or a capoeira, a yellow bourbon, from a farmer who really knows what they're doing. So that's changed a lot, the, the focus on the day. You can find a tiny lot in a small valley somewhere where a farmer is doing fantastic work. I've, I've known since 1999. I've been in Cup Excellence, uh, I think, 10 times or something in different countries. And Brazil is shining. There's a lot of fantastic coffees in this country. But we know, of course, that there's a there's a huge production also of, of commodity coffee, right? I've been living in Brazil and Europe for the last six years. Uh, the major difference that I've seen is not only are there more coffee shops, but more of the highest quality coffee is staying in the country to be made here. That's the biggest difference. People do, of course, know Brazil for producing volume, quantity, and coffee. But the, the high quality specialty stuff has been has been exported, has been put out of the country. The biggest difference is that that it's still a small part, but more of it is staying here now, and more of it is experienced here. That's the biggest biggest thing. That's, that's changed out in several other countries, actually. Yeah, Salvador, Colombia, and so on. You now find tiny coffee shops who can afford having those excellent coffees in the country. And they have like an awareness suddenly coming also in that country, especially for technical skills. Work on a little bit on that, I think. Technical skills need to be polished up. He's, ve he's very good at um, dosing the coffee and making the coffee. His cleanliness is not as good as it could be. It's good, but it's not as good as it could be. And at the world champion level, you need to be excellent. Perfect. Um, and then working with the coffee that you have and knowing the coffee you have as well, being able to describe it um, and bring out the best in, in that particular coffee. So of course it has a chance. It'll take some work, a lot of work. Yeah. But that goes for all the champions. They need to work hard. Uh, he has a chance that he lives in a post producing country and has access or the possibility at least to find diamonds in his own country of fresh coffee. If you're from Iceland or I'm Norwegian, from Norway, you have to buy that coffee and find it through a roaster somewhere and then work on it in your country and then bring it to competitions. But if you're from Brazil, you have a chance of finding fantastic coffees here. But you need to find it, find a coffee which can deliver on this portion. It must be tasty, it must be really good to taste and roast well. And he should practice on the competition machine, the one which will be used in Amsterdam. At least the last the last month, I would practice on that machine somewhere, either in this country or go somewhere and practice on the competition machine. That needs some sponsoring, of course, some help. To know the grinder, know the machine. That's essential, yeah, that's very important. We hope that all of Brazil gets behind him. Same. Definitely. And yeah, it will require sponsorship and support. And we hope that Brazil does that.